Je suis imam I'm an imam, a Muslim and gay. That's no problem for me. On the contrary. Bien au contraire. It is written that anyone who does it or lets it be done to them must die. They shall be thrown from towers, buried under walls or burned. The Prophet says, kill the one who does it and to whom it is done. You should kill anyone who does it. And that's why, my brothers, homosexuality carries the death penalty. Does that mean Ludovic Mohamed Zahed is condemned to death? The 39-year-old Frenchman with Algerian roots is an imam, an Islamic religious leader, and he leads an openly gay lifestyle. For me, anyone who claims that Islam and homosexuality are mutually exclusive is a fascist. Zahed is Europe's first imam brave enough to break a taboo. He wants to be a role model and prove to the largely conservative religious scholars that a sexually tolerant Islam is possible. This has sparked a movement in Europe. It's known as the Inclusive Mosque Initiative. Kindred spirits join together and meet in all kinds of places to pray together. He says the whole thing should be arranged a little differently because he usually stages his events sitting down, and this looks a little like a lecture. That is too formal for him. Zahed believes that God loves everyone. That's why Allah also embraces gays, lesbians and transsexuals, he takes into account that his interpretation of Islam leads to death threats. Of course it's dangerous, and that shouldn't be underestimated, but the danger affects us all. At first it was much more dangerous. For many it was a shock, a revolution. If someone attacks me today, that only strengthens the will of the others to carry on. Salam. We're going to start with the dhikr, a Sufi meditation, very relaxed. It's easy to repeat for those who speak Arabic, but also for those who don't. Zahed preaches a form of Islam without dogmas and prohibitions. Everyone must be able to build their personal relationship to God. That's why women and men are allowed to pray together here, regardless of whether they're gay or not. We're in a similar situation to the Protestants during the time of the Reformation in the 15th and 16th centuries. In one or two hundred years' time, the progressive Muslims won't be in the majority, although who knows, but they'll be financially independent, train their own imams and have their own places of worship. Young Lebanese, Iraqi and Syrian men are partying in a gay club in Cologne. Many of them are refugees. If you want to go to a gay club in Lebanon, you are not allowed to hand 
to catch hand for another man. And even there's in the club inside, you'll find 10 to 15 security guy. And the gay scene in Lebanon is like, there's still fear. Okay, you can go out, but every time you are going out, you are taking a risk. Ibrahim Mokdad is 30 years old and has broken with Islam. He believes the religion will never accept gay people. Over a year ago, he fled Lebanon and came to Cologne. He lives with refugee support worker Ina and is waiting for his residency permit. Ina, I, this, I guess we fry it on the side. Then put it no, no, the... it's cooking with this. this. It's okay, can put... yeah, yeah. Maybe you fry it before? No, no. No? He was thrown into jail in Lebanon for being gay. He lived in constant fear. A man with a hatred of homosexuals once lured him to a flat on a fake date where he beat him up and things got worse. He just pushed me from the balcony. And when he pushed me from the balcony, he came down. I didn't have a fear from the fall because I felt nothing. I was maybe, uh, I felt nothing when he felt me. But where I have fear, I had fear when I was on the ground and I saw him directly and I saw this hate in his face and saying, shame on you to be Muslim, you are Shame on you to be called Ibrahim. This is Ramadan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He landed on a car roof. That softened his impact a little. Ibrahim was seriously injured. He spent months in hospital. The screws in his body were only removed in Cologne. So this is one of the screws, the biggest one. It's for in now. <laughs> well, this picture is from the, when we were sitting in the... This is me here. Once he was able to walk again, he fled to Germany via the Balkan route. He has no further contact with his family in Lebanon. After the attack, he felt he was treated like a leper. <laughs> Imagine my family didn't want to support me to have my surgery. My uncle came, he told me, later on you'll pay me back if you work or something. And I was at home. I won't tell you how I was treated. I was in a room, in a bed, they kept me in a room. They only come inside when they want to bring me food. So it was really hard. And you know, starting from this point, when you start to be punished, Lebanon, Ibrahim's home country, is still a comparatively liberal country. The ban on homosexuality was recently lifted. But gays still face violence, persecution and discrimination on a daily basis. The situation is much worse for gays, lesbians and transsexuals in the rest of the Islamic world. Homosexuality even carries the death penalty in Saudi Arabia and eight further countries. Some people start to say the homophobic is related to cultural thoughts, cultural ideology, traditions. But what built cultures? What built these traditions? It's built on religion. And I believe that all this homophobic acts based on religion, because every homophobic at, at, attack happened. For example, the first word they use it against God's will. Ibrahim tells us that things aren't much better in Muslim communities in Europe. He invites us to the Sofra dinner, 
where gay Muslim refugees regularly meet up. Almost everyone here has fled. Most experience terrible things at home, almost always in the name of Islam. The fact that many don't want to be filmed demonstrates how deep their fear of persecution lies, even here in Europe. And for safety reasons, we can't say where the dinner is taking place. I stored all this hate, all these struggles, all this pain. And when I came here, I turned all over Germany. I discovered everything. Because you appreciate what you was forbidden to do. You now appreciate that you are respected. Ludovic Zahed, the gay imam, lives in Marseille. He's originally from a country where homosexuality is punishable with a prison sentence, Algeria. He attended a Salafi Quran school there. When I was 17, I realized that I was gay and that that didn't fit with Islam. I realized that I was developing feelings for the other boys at my school. After I came out, I stopped with religion for a while. It was just too tough. I couldn't separate my faith from the traditional fascist, patriarchal homophobia Back then, I thought Islam and Arab culture were to blame. That's why I wanted to get as far away as possible from this culture and Islam. Years later, equipped with enough self-confidence, he returned to his faith. This is Zahed's personal footage of his pilgrimage to the holy city of Islam, Mecca. If I weren't gay, then my understanding of Islam would probably be the same as that of my former teachers, fascist and patriarchal. He studied the Quran and learned it off by heart. Reading it again, he realized that it did not mention prohibiting homosexuality, let alone calling for the death penalty. So how do Muslim scholars justify their condemnation of same-sex love? Most people who condemn homosexuality later base it on verses in the Quran that they claim are about homosexuality. I can quote the verses about Sodom and Gomorrah. They're not about homosexuality. They're about rape, violence, and people who aren't hospitable. Like so much in Islam, it seems to be a matter of interpretation. Ludovic Mohammed Zahed spreads his interpretation like an itinerant preacher at lectures and prayer circles all over Europe. Nice to meet you. I heard a lot Thank about you. you and Thank you. I really appreciate the work. It's Thank great. you. Always a pleasure to be here. It's a nice community you have in Berlin. He always preaches that Islam isn't homophobic. He sees a different reason for hatred and violence against gay people in the Arab world. When people are happy, peaceful, they have money to, 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 
to feed their children, they would not go elsewhere, flew away uh, from their home, or kill their neighbor because he's gay or he's black or white or red or yellow. That kind of fascism, discrimination of minorities appears almost in, throughout human history here and there, almost all the time when there is a crisis, economical, political, and now ecological crisis. Ibrahim would no longer attend a traditional mosque like this one in Cologne. But he says that the liberal Islam Zahed preaches is wishful thinking. I don't see these liberal groups in Arabic countries because now they have the freedom to interpret the, the, the way they want. But I guess the real Islam is what's stated in Saudi Arabia, Azhar and Tehran. And to change the ideology of these three main countries which are ruled by Islam, Sharia and Islamic laws, I guess you won't change it till ever. He's broken with his faith. He experiences Islam as homophobic, even in Cologne. And that's not just his subjective feeling. As an active member of the refugee charity Rainbow Refugees, he's confronted with it almost every day. <laughs> There's the story of this Iraqi, for example, who feels female and goes by the name of Maria. Ibrahim visits Maria in her new flat. Maria previously lived in refugee accommodation. When I was living in the camp, I went to the job center. I told them, please send me back to my home country. I want to die there, I don't want to die here. Why will you die here? In the camps, people were always talking about me. And what happened with you in the last camp? A person had a knife. Mm -hmm. And what did he say? He said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He asked, are you Muslim? It was terrifying. Maria ran away and survived. Others were less fortunate. Two East Africans want to remain anonymous. They were knifed by an Algerian man in a refugee home. He shoved us and asked if we were gay and if we were Muslims. He shouted out the question and I said yes, and then he stabbed us. Despite their horrendous experiences, the East Africans are sticking firmly by their faith. I still believe in God, even though I'm gay. I just want people to leave me alone and not harm me. That's why I don't go to a mosque, because I'm attacked there. I just pray alone at home. Ibrahim knows many gay refugees who are struggling with Islam, but who want to keep their faith. That's why he invites Ludovic Mohamed Zahed to the gay refugee meeting in Cologne. I have some quotes from Quran which accuse homosexuality. How can they deny this? The liberal preacher accepts the invitation to come to Cologne. Nice to meet you. Finally. <laughs> it's a nice place. Yeah, it's my friend's place. Let's make it directly to me. Yes, yes. How can you explain it when I'm thrown from the third floor, I'm like a dead chicken on the floor, and somebody 
on top of me after he saw me from the third floor, just on top of me, just saying, you are not Muslim, shame on you to be Muslim, you must be killed. And he started to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Yes. How you can convince me this is not Islam? You know, when I was a teenager, I've been bitten and my nose was broken, my cheeks was broken by my uh, brother, my father was insulting me every day almost and so on. It changed. Now I have my own place in the family. Still some people, like my uncle, he's living in Qatar and he's telling me, I'm going to send someone to, to, to kill you someday. But uh, even the threats and the violence, it doesn't mean that um, they fulfilled their project. Their project was to make out of me a straight guy. It didn't work. We have to face the fact that we'll always be a minority. But it doesn't mean that we don't have to, to do the job. You know what I mean? Yeah, then the Algerian government has the Lebanese government. Ibrahim isn't that convinced by the imam's arguments, and Zahed is about to meet a much larger group of skeptics. Hello again. Maria. Maria. There's great interest in Zahed's theory of a liberal Islam that's open to gays and transsexuals. We founded the first European inclusive mosque because the mosque is a place where a lot of political uh, power struggles and tensions are expressing themselves within Muslim communities and societies to help our people free themselves from dogmatism and at the same time from also racism and Islamophobia. I'm okay about being gay, but I want the people I love and my family to accept me the way I am. My question is, is what you're saying based on your own personal opinion, or is it based on something else? Islam, it's us. So we have to decide what kind of Islam we want to, for tomorrow, and to bring our families, perhaps not to, to love homosexuality, trans identity, but at least to be more open-minded on, on many, many subjects. In their home countries, the refugees experienced Islam as a dogmatic system with strict rules that prescribe what's right and wrong. They're expecting the same classifications from Zahed. One last question. Is it true that if two men sleep with each other, the throne of God shakes? Is that a hadith? If I love another man, or you love another man, we won't shake the throne of God. This is impossible. I don't understand it. I'm not talking about love. I'm talking about two men having sex. Even then it's impossible, and this is a very weak hadith. If two men are in love, they won't shake the throne of God. This is impossible. How can a human being be able to do that, especially when he loves? It is a lie. I told them, I'm not the imam who says that's haram, that's a sin. It's not that simple. Everyone has to form their own opinion. Otherwise, we'll have the same problems and the same dogmatism in 20, 30 years that we want to overcome. Yes, you appreciate this and how you think about us, but you are the minority here, you are only 5%. How can you affect the 95% of the Muslim world to think this way? Please, thank you for coming. Yeah. It was so nice. Yeah. You did and such I'm, a great job. I really feel lucky also that I met you and I got to know what is the, re the Islam from your point of view. Yes, from and my point of view. <laughs> yeah, that's what's important from your point of view. Yeah. Zahed hasn't really convinced Ibrahim and his friends. Nevertheless, the imam's visit wasn't in vain. Just the fact that there's someone who openly and loudly says, look, 
it's possible you can live both should be a great help for many gay Muslims. I'm totally against giving up and saying, do what you want with Islam, be homophobic, kill gay people. I'm going to keep out of it because you pushed me out of the religion. No, if you're from a Muslim family, it doesn't matter if you're a believer or not. If you don't talk about Islam, then Islam will talk about you. Hmm.